Hello, my name is Ruth Nabeck, and my tech talk is about XML, or Extensible Markup Language. So on the agenda, we're going to have a brief introduction to XML, how to create your own XML files, and methods for extracting data from XMLs. So what is XML? XML is a markup language, a lot like HTML, except XML doesn't have any predefined tags. On this slide, I've written some example XML code showing a list of animals categorized by puppy and kitten. XML was designed to store and transport data. By itself, it does absolutely nothing. Someone must write code to interact with the data. So you might be asking yourself, if XML does nothing, and I don't need to write any, and I need to write code to interact with it, why should I even bother learning XML? Well, I did a quick job search on Indeed.com, uh, so here's the screenshot, with the keywords XML and developer. And within five miles of New York City, there were 549 results, and it included companies you may be familiar with, like JP Morgan, WebMD, and Major League Baseball. So how is XML used? XML can complement HTML. In many HTML applications, XML is used to transport data, while HTML is used to format and display the data. So XML is also used in transaction data. Thousands of formats exist in many different industries, including stock market information, weather, news feeds, and financial information. Exchanging data between incompatible systems is a time-consuming task for developers, so XML files are used in data transformations. So how do you go about creating your own XML files? Well, the XML is like a tree. Documents are stored and they require a root element. Parent, child, and sibling are used to describe the relationships between the elements. Um, in the example code that I've written, animals would be the root node, and every element under animals is a child of animals, and puppy and kitten are siblings of each other. So an XML element includes everything from the element's opening to closing bracket. Elements can contain text, attributes, and other elements. Empty elements can be opened and closed with a single tag, and they can contain attributes. All elements require closing tags and proper nesting. Elements must follow naming rules. Names must be case sensitive, must start with a letter or underscore, and can contain letters, digits, hyphens, underscores, or periods, and they cannot contain spaces. Elements are extensible. This means if an application has been built to extract all of the puppy and kitten data, the app will not break if I add another animal category to the file. XML has attributes. Elements can contain attributes just like HTML. Attributes must be quoted with either single or double quotes. There are no rules governing what should be an attribute versus what should be an element. Things to consider when deciding to use an attribute. Attributes cannot contain multiple values, values or tree structures. Elements can. Attributes are not easily expandable, and elements are. It is recommended to use attributes for metadata, such as IDs, instead of values. So in my example, the type attribute attached to kitten would have been better served as an element. So the next step, XML data extraction, or as I like to call it, dealing with the XML files created by others. So the XML DOM is used for create, read, update, or delete XML elements. It stands for the document object model. According to the XML DOM, in the XML document, everything is a node. The entire example is a document node. Text within the elements, like rover and spot, are text nodes. Elements like name and color are element nodes. Attributes like ID and type are attribute nodes. And the comment kittens start here is a comment node. 
root, parent, and child and sibling relationships mentioned earlier still apply. So there are multiple ways to access nodes. The document is accessed through an XML HTTP request. Elements are accessed through the getElementByTagName method, looping through the node tree using node relationships, or using XPath. So if you need to access the XML file separate from the console, the XML HTTP request API transfers data between a client and a server. It provides easy access to files for web applications. Despite the name, it can be used to retrieve any type of data, not just XML. In my example, I am getting the animals.xml file. Once the page returns an OK status, my function will be called on the file. In order to get elements, you, use, you can use get elements by tag name. And it can be uh, used on a single node to return an array of child nodes. For these examples, I'm using the XML document node. When I get elements by tag name puppy, I receive an array of two puppy elements in the terminal. When I get elements by tag name, I receive an array of four name elements because there are four names in the document. There are two puppy names and two kitten names. But how can I only return the names of the puppies? Well, to get the names of the puppies via trans traversing or looping, I declare the puppies, I loop over the array, I look at the second child node of each puppy, which is the name node, then I look at the first child node of the name node, which is the text node, and then I get the node value of the text node. You can also get the information using node relationships. The puppy names can be accessed by declaring the puppies, looping over the returned array, look at the first element child, which is the name node, look at the first child of the name node, which is the text node, and then get the node value of the text node. So you might be wondering, OK, that was a lot of stuff. How do I do this easier? Well, the exact answer is XPath. XPath, which stands for XML Path Language, uses a path-like syntax to navigate nodes. Nodes can be selected by name, from the root, and from a specified node. Predicates can be used to find a specific node or node that has a specific value. Wildcard characters can be used to select unknown nodes. To use XPath in Internet Explorer, use the select nodes method. For all other browsers, use the evaluate method. For the XPath solution, I used document.evaluate, which takes the XPath and XML document to return an XPath result. The XPath result has an iterate next method, which can be used to iterate through the nodes and return the inner HTML or text of the nodes. As you can see, I'm able to use puppy slash name to retrieve the puppy names without referencing any child nodes or relationships. So in conclusion, I did a brief introduction to XML. I covered some items to consider when creating your own XML files, and I showed you some methods for extracting data from existing XML files. Thank you.